Ebola. The more we learn about it, the scarier and more confusing it gets. I recently talked to Cedar sinai Director of Epidemiology, Dr. Reka Murthy. She's got the answers to your most pressing questions. Dr. Murthy, the fear factor surrounding Ebola has really ramped up in the last few weeks. Just how afraid should we really be? The risk of transmission of Ebola from somebody who's ill with Ebola is really highest when in somebody who's very ill, the terminal end of their disease. And the risk is only shown for people who are directly caring for that person. Even in, in many of the studies that have been published uh, of past Ebola outbreaks, and there have been many, there have been over 20 outbreaks in the last 40 years. So there's a lot known about this disease. Turns out in those studies that there are three important findings. One is that they don't really find environmental contamination with this virus. So it's not something you can pick up from sitting uh, on a you know, seat or where somebody's been or touching something that somebody has touched who has Ebola. The risk of transmission is actually from direct contact. And when somebody who is very ill at the end of their life has a lot of virus in their blood, and that's where the experience in Africa with a lot of the funeral rites, which require touching the skin and touching the body, um, has really been closely associated with transmission. The World Health Organization recently reported that new cases of Ebola may reach 10,000 people per week by early December of this year. Is, does that increase the risk of it spreading globally? Well, I think there, there's certainly the concern that as we have, we live in a world where global travel is now the norm, they really, there's a risk for any kind of illness to be transmitted around the world. We've seen that with SARS. We see that now with Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. We see it with food-related, um, you know, uh, contaminated food that can travel the borders. So there's always a possibility that someone might slip the net. But we haven't seen that yet. Uh, we've seen a lot of screening in New York, for example. At the airport. Right. And, and in, in hospitals. Oh, in hospitals mm -hmm. also. And, and, there been, and there's not been people identified. So given that we've had one traveler so far uh, who has uh, the one person who has sort of slipped the net, so to speak, and uh, was identified, there are likely to be others, and that's the concern. Some people have been expressing fears about even going to a hospital right now. Maybe they're not understanding that, that Ebola cases have been in only three states here in the United States. So it's not something that people going to hospitals should fear that Ebola may be transmitted in hospitals from patient to patient. And that's a really important point. Um, the other is that it, it's important to be aware that hospitals are being more attentive to putting in early detection measures. Based on the things that happened in Dallas, and there were the CDC acknowledges that some mistakes were made, do you feel that U.S. hospitals are prepared for an Ebola epidemic should one occur? That's a tough question. Clearly in Africa there's a lot, a lot of lack of infrastructure, lack of supplies, lack of um, really basic training. That's not the case in the U.S. In the U.S. there is really an, uh, a good infrastructure for infection prevention, for basic um, you know, medical um, supplies. There's no sh they're not reusing equipment. So we're not sure we can compare the two. Who in the U.S. should be tested for Ebola? Well, any testing is going to be done in conjunction with local, state, and federal health agencies. So when a patient presents with a travel history, having been to one of these countries, or, uh, and, or has con had contact with, uh, with somebody who has Ebola and has symptoms, those individuals would be uh, reported to the health department. And the health department would then assess whether testing should be done. So those testing are not, the testing for Ebola is not done out in the field. It's actually done uh, by the health department and by the CDC. And they are basically going to respond and come and assist in, uh, in evaluating the case, taking the blood samples and testing them. So if you haven't traveled to those countries, Correct. you haven't been exposed to anybody, Correct. it doesn't make sense to go to your doctor right now or say you're going in for an annual physical exam and say, I want to be tested for Ebola. They won't do it because it's Correct. not necessary. It's not available and it's not necessary. Is it, is the blood, is it a blood test? It's a blood test. When do you believe there will be a cure and vaccine for Ebola? I wish I knew. There's a lot of work being done on it, clearly. And because of these recent uh, epidemic, there is an intense research underway. 
and I know both for vaccines and for medications, there's intense research. Dr. Murthy, finally, what would be your top five tips for people who are just feeling so fearful about an Ebola epidemic coming to the United States? So first of all, the risk of an Ebola epidemic in the U.S. is remote. So that's really important to know. And it's hard to keep it, that in mind when you're being bombarded with um, news right we are now. So do the basics. Make sure that you got your flu shot. Washing your hands whenever you are um, you know, going to the bathroom or have you eaten. Uh, and even when you're preparing food, making sure that your food is well, meat is well cooked and you're keeping your utensils free of contamination when you're uh, working with meat. Um, making sure that if you have a respiratory illness or illness, you don't go to work. You know, and maybe even reminding your coworkers not to come to work if they're ill. Thank you so much, Dr. Murthy, for busting some of these myths we have and answering these pressing questions. Thank you. For updates on Ebola, visit LifeScript.com. From Los Angeles, I'm Diane Wedner. <music>